Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon and happy Friday. This is uh, Scott Fiaschetti from Geopath. I just again want to welcome everybody to today's out of home office hours. Uh, this is the advanced session and today we're going to do something a little different than we have been doing over the past uh, a couple of weeks or actually a couple of months with these advanced sessions. You know, typically if you've been joining for a while, we've been doing use cases with members to really try to highlight the ways to use the new Geopath Insights to create value for clients or, you know, just different ways to look at the data and use the data um, that, that's coming out very soon. Um, but today, uh, we want to cover the uh, best practices, standards, and protocols document that was released on September 16th. Um, this is a document that I worked in very close partnership with the Futures Council. And uh, there's a number of members on the call with me today who I'll introduce in a moment. But first, I do want to introduce the Brian Shopper, who is my sidekick for these sessions all the time. He's here with me. And I also do want to say as we get into the session, and one of the key things about this session is this third, third bullet here on the slide is we do want this to be a session where you can ask questions about that best practices document and really have a discussion about it. So that was one of the key goals for today. Um, another key goal is that I want to walk through the uh, online training platform that we just launched yesterday and uh, a, uh, a uh, newsletter uh, announcements going out as we speak, uh, telling everybody in the industry that this is now available, it's on our website, and how you can use it. But I'll give you a sneak peek to that just before we leave the call today and uh, answer any questions on that as well. But uh, without further ado, I do want to thank and uh, introduce the, the panel today. So we have um, from Salt Lake City, uh, Gina Stratford, VP of Sales and Marketing for Yesco Outdoor Media. She's uh, one of the council co-chair, the Futures Council co-chair. So I just want to welcome Gina. Good morning. Still morning in Utah, so good morning. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then also with us is Matthew Knoll, Director of Marketing and Digital Strategy at EMC Outdoor. So he's coming to us from uh, just outside of Philly. He's also the uh, council co-chair as well. So I want to say hi to Matt. Hi, everyone. Great. And then uh, with me right here is uh, Mike Mangiovanni from Horizon Media. He's Associate Media Director for Out of Home and uh, serves as our uh, council secretary. Hello, everyone. Cool. So thank you everyone for being on the call today, for being the panel. I think it's going to be a really great session. Uh, a couple of things I want to uh, talk about before we uh, talk about the document, and I think this will all lead us to this document. You may have seen this announcement that came out earlier this week, or you may have seen some of our advertising in, in Times Square uh, talking about the new measurement. We're get excited and getting ready for the October 1st launch, but really what does that mean? What's the transition look like? So I wanted to uh, just make sure everybody was aware of that. I know we've talked about it in different places and at different times, but I just wanted everybody on the call today to, to have these kind of key points about the transition. So the current plan obviously is uh, the new Geopath Insights will come out of beta on October 1st, but what does that really mean? So what that means is that you can start to use this data for planning campaigns that launch January 1st in 2020 or, or after that. So anything launching in Jan in, in 2020. But the, with the run up to that, um, if, any, if any campaigns launch before that, we will continue to use the Geopath legacy data. And um, don't worry, you know, like we're not turning off any of the old tools. All the legacy tools will remain operational at least through the end of the year, if not even longer. So I just want to rest everybody to rest assured and just have a general sense of kind of the high level plan of what's going on. Uh, we just, uh, if you want more information, we just published this blog this morning as well. And it, it talks a little bit more about what to expect and some of the things you'll see as you look at the data in terms of how inventory is going to be um, categorized and, and things like that. So we want to try to communicate as much as possible. As always, you know, if you ever have any questions, you know, please always reach out to us at geekout at geopath.org. That's really an, uh, a quick and easy way to, to try to get your questions answered. So I um, want to make sure we are talking about that. And one of the key things that we wanted to develop to help with this transition was the best practices, standards, and protocols document. And uh, you know, here's a couple of screenshots of the cover page and the table of contents. Um, we encourage everybody to download this. I'm gonna just, again, like I said, we're gonna talk a little bit at high level first about some of the sections 
and then just be available to answer questions. And I do have a few of my own that I want to ask the panel as well. But the goal of this document and how do you, how we hope people in the industry use this document, but the goal was ultimately to serve as, a, as and if you've seen any of the, the um, kind of communication we've been sending on it, it's really, we use this keyword as a touchstone. It's this, it's this document that wherever side of the industry you're on, you can use to, again, to have guidelines, to have protocols, to have some standards. So how you interact at, throughout the uh, RFP development process and the response process. So it's, it's this place where you can go and uh, have a common set of uh, talking points, whether you're on the agency side, where you're planning, or you're buying, or you're selling. And so that was the initial intent to just give the industry this, this base level set of documents to talk about. Um, and just roughly how it's set up, if you haven't been into the document yet, uh, it really starts out uh, with a review of the geopath methodology and how it's evolved and how it's changed. Uh, we even have an infographic that talks about you know, how do we get to our measurement? A couple of different infographics there. And then, but the main, the core of the document, which again, Gina and Matthew and, and Mike will speak to, uh, the, the, the middle part of it is really about structured around the RFP process. And so whether you're creating an RFP, whether you're uh, responding to an RFP and then post kind of post RFP, you know, campaign launch, et cetera. We tried to cover that and tried to, think about what are those uh, interaction points where people may need guidance and, and have questions as the new Geopath Insights launches. Um, and then also beyond that, we, we, we brainstorm a set of frequently asked questions that we think will be helpful, um, whether you're selling locally, whether you're like, again, on an agency side, et cetera. So we tried to think of some of those commonly asked questions. Um, and ultimately this is a living document. So this is something as a futures council, we'll go back to and revise frequently over the coming months as the new Geopath Insights becomes more evolved and these questions come up and we realize, you know, we'll, well, maybe we need more information here or there. So this is, uh, this is just the first version of it and we'll continue to evolve it over time. Um, and if I haven't said, I know I've talked about uh, questions, uh, please use the, 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 the Q&A module to, to ask any questions as we go along. And we'll pause and try to answer them in real time. But right now we'll talk about each of the sections at a high level and then have a period where we can ask questions. That said, you can, you can also type them in as we're going along. But the first section, as I said, opens up and it's a really overview. So we wanted to talk about and have a nice area where you can have just a uh, an understanding or at least uh, an explanation of the evolution of Geopath Insights going all the way back to eyes on and talking about how it's evolved and how the new data sets are helping uh, helping us have a more granular look at audience. And again, we break that down into the four key building blocks of out of home measurement. So there's a slide there on that. Um, and it talks, uh, you know, shows you how we build up to our current measurement. And then uh, this contextualizing audience and out of home media, basically what that is, we often get questions like, well, how do you know? How do you know that 30% of people passing by this unit have been to Starbucks in the past 30 days? But that's what that's, that, that portion tries to help explain. And then we wanted to give everybody this nice checklist of yesterday to today. So you can see how the tools have evolved uh, from current ADS and old plan functionality into what's available through the API and the Geopath Insights Suite. And then uh, we've also talked about uh, how impressions have evolved. And the key with this is, you know, it goes through all the different aspects of what might have changed. So uh, person per vehicle, pedestrian traffic, illuminated circulation, it talks about what has changed and but why that matters. So why should I care about that? And it's a it's a um, a table that you can use hopefully if you get questions from clients or advertisers or you know if, depending on what side if you're an agency an operator that you can use to have it as nice talking points there. And then we walk work through a use case as well. And if you've been on any of these webinars, you'll you'll notice that one of the examples is, is fairly familiar. Or if you joined yesterday's uh, foundational session, uh, Brian walked through actually that use case and showed you how to pull data for that. Um, so in section two, I'm going to hand it off to Matt to talk a little bit about that section because he was in driving the development of this section and can really talk about kind of 
why it was developed in the way it was and some of the key points that we want everybody to, to take from that. Sure, thanks, Scott. Um, as everyone may be aware, the Futures Council is made up of uh, people from both sides of the buyer-seller relationship. So we have folks from the agency side and, and folks from the media side as well. And as we started to develop this document, um, one of the first things that was really clear to all of us was that it was uh, imperative that the document be very collaborative. So as we go through these next couple of sections, um, we really develop them working very closely together, sort of across both sides of the table. So drafting these sections, sharing them with folks from the other side, getting feedback, questions, clarifications, you know, and reiterating it and refining it over time. So we really have input from kind of both sides of the equation. So in section two, we really focus on uh, the development of the RFP and with particular attention to the parts of the process where uh, planners will be using the new insights data. Um, with all of the new targeting parameters, all the new ways to look at this information uh, that are becoming available with the new insights data, we really wanted to place an emphasis on um, the depth of communication and the clarity of communication on how planners are using this information to develop their RFPs. Uh, so it's very clear that more, the more information we can give to our supplier partners, the better. Uh, the more information we can give them, the better we arm them to you know, deliver us what we're looking for. Right? Um, and also the, the specificity of that information. Um, again, there are so many new ways to look at it within Insights. Uh, it's really important that we be very clear about which, um, which particular audience profile we might be using. So that said, the, uh, the main areas of focus um, are really sort of establishing the top line objectives for the campaign and spelling those out very clearly. Um, and then the other areas really focus on how are you identifying your audience, uh, how are you identifying your geography, and how are you going to be looking at the media, um, what's going to be important in how you're evaluating it, um, what types of media the, the client is going to look at. Um, so. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, so, I to type in. That's okay. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm getting a cold, so I might, my voice might be a little off. <laughs> um, again, one of, the, one of the main points is sort of that clarity of communication, so that when we give the RFP to our, our um, supplier partners, they can be sure that they are looking at the same information that we're looking at. You know, so it might be um, someone who owned a Toyota in the last six months versus somebody who owned a Toyota a year ago, or uh, what level of geography we're looking at. Is it DMA? Is it CBSA? Is it zip code? How are we looking at that? We just make sure that we're all comparing apples to apples um, with the end goal, really, of simplifying and streamlining this process so that we can all transact more quickly, more accurately, and ultimately get to the best result for the advertiser in the end. Great. Cool. Thank you, Matt. And just want to hand it off to Gina, who uh, drove the development. And again, as Matt, Matt said, it was a very collaborative process. But, uh, Gina headed up the um, the, the section three development. And I want to give her a chance to, again, just talk about similarly how it was developed and some of the, the key points behind what, what the team was thinking as they were driving this section. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, you know, we actually, just to reiterate, yes, collaboration was the number one thing. And as vendors, we actually had the easy side of this project because we basically told the agencies what we wanted in their RFPs. And uh, then our our job was just to commit that we would give the responses back appropriately. So thank you, Matthew, and uh, all of the agencies for agreeing to our terms. <laughs> um, no, again, I think the most important thing as a vendor is is really holding the agencies to that, those commitments. If you receive an RFP and you don't feel like it's detailed enough, uh, get back with them and help them understand that we have more information available. We have some more detail that we'd like to dig into. The whole goal is for us to work together to provide the most successful campaigns for advertising clients that we possibly can. So communication is just key through the whole process. 
um, you know, in creating the RFP and submitting it to the vendors and in responding to the RFP as a vendor, and then just continuing that, that communication loop back and forth throughout the process as things might uh, change. There was a couple of um, references throughout the document, but especially in, in section three that basically said, hey, if you have other options that you, you determine, you know your markets better than the agencies do. Somebody sitting in New York City doesn't know much about a small rural market in mid-America. So if you know something that the agency wouldn't have known when putting that together, make sure you're communicating that information back to them, letting them know that there's inventory that you feel would be very uh, appropriate for their client, and then ask how they would like that inventory submitted to them as to not sort of muddy the waters for the, with the original request, but make sure that you're getting your voice heard and saying, hey, look, I have inventory that I think would be great for this particular client. So I think that's an important aspect. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch on too is actually a conversation that took place after we completed this document in its entirety. And as a vendor, I started to feel um, like maybe we had been a little bit remiss in leaving out uh, some direction for direct sellers. So people that are in our industry that are out on the street selling to their direct clients, this document very much takes you through the process of creating an RFP and then from a vendor side responding to an RFP, um, but it doesn't really specify as a vendor that's selling direct sort of where you land in that process. Uh, but as I, uh, as I started to voice that concern, the answer really did just come straight to me immediately. The idea of how this this uh, document takes you through the RFP creation process and then through the response process. As a direct seller to your clients, you actually are the agency and you are the media vendor all, in, all wrapped up in one. So if you are a, a media vendor that sells directly to clients rather than to ad agencies, my suggestion is to read this document in its entirety and think of yourself, put yourself in the place of the media buyer or the ad agency as you're going through that RFP creation process section and then switch roles and say, okay, these are the, these are the important factors. This is the audience, the media, and the KPIs that, that I decided my client were going to be important to my clients. And now I need to find the inventory that matches that. So I think that was the, the main thing for me is just helping everyone understand that this document can be used in the traditional RFP agency to vendor process, but very much the same uh, document can be used in the direct sell process to, to direct clients. Cool. Great. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate that. Um, and so next I wanted to talk about sections four and five. Um, Section four really talks about post-campaign analysis, and then you'll see five is about FAQs, but Michael, take us through that really quickly. <clears throat> yes, uh, thanks, Scott. So in section four, we briefly touch on post-campaign analysis and future capabilities using both annual and temporal data sets. Um, you know, and it's good to understand that while not necessarily relevant to the upcoming launch, being that these data sets will not be available, this is an area that will continue to evolve over time. And it's something that as a buyer or a seller, understanding data trends will benefit each group for different planning objectives, whether they're looking to sell and understand that the future uh, expectations or looking to buy and understand the future expectations. And it's gonna be very useful for both reporting, added value, and also refining uh, maximum efficiency for planning purposes. But as it's noted, this is a living document and it will be updated as new data sets become available. Great. Yeah, and I think you made a really a key point that I want to make sure everybody on the call is aware of too. So when the the the, in, the Geopath Insights comes out of beta, the data set will be an annual data set. Um, I know we're looking at and talking about the launch of seasonal data, but that will be further down the line. We wanted to make sure the industry got comfortable uh, with, and this was a key discussion with the Futures Council. We wanted, to be, we wanted to be sure that the industry overall was comfortable with all the changes we're making and then eventually roll that into. So this will be, um, the seasonal data will start to come into play a little bit later in the, the year. Um, so I want to move to section five with the FAQs as well. Sure. Um, and the last section of our document is, uh, is a set of FAQs. Now, these are questions as a council that we spent a lot of time trying to identify to be the most common and pertinent. 
and obviously they're not limited to these, but we felt that these would offer the greatest benefit when digesting the document and the new data. Uh, these cover off on areas such as why did the industry make this change and how to best explain the variations and impressions to your clients. Um, these are hot, but hot button topics of conversation that we anticipate whether you're a buyer or seller, you'll be faced with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as we do dive deeper. Um, you know, these questions from a top line perspective, try to cover off on all aspects of the industry and different pieces of information that will be pertinent and relevant when you're facing different aspects on the buying and selling mm -hmm. process. Great, cool. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, because I think there'll probably be some questions around, uh, you know, that were actually things we thought about in the FAQ section. So the last section really was just talks a little bit more about the collaboration process. It talks about the Futures Council. If you're wondering like, what is that and who are, who are these people? You can go back there and check that out. It also points you to additional resources that are available. And um, the, in the appendix, there's also even a glossary of terms. We wanted to make sure, you know, if you're somebody that's new to the industry and uh, we're, we're talking about things like, you know, TRPs and, you know, impressions and universe, we wanted to have some of those definitions in the back so that everybody could uh, you know, just be on the same page with the, with even just the, 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 the lexicon of how we're talking about things. Um, and in, also, if you're wondering where it is, this is a screenshot of our homepage. This is probably the easiest and fastest place to get it. Uh, you just go to our homepage, scroll down a little bit. And, um, you know, while, you know, we would love everybody to download and read the entire document, we understand maybe you're busy, you don't have a lot of time. So it's been also built to be, you can download the section that you may feel is more relevant to you or for you so that you can um, just again just kind of or even just look at the whole document but then have on the side you know uh, I really care only about the developed ERP section or whatever that might be so uh, with that um, we want to pause and you know just see what questions are going on in people's head um, as you're starting to think about those or type those in uh, I do have a couple of questions on my own that I, I do want to uh, hear um, you know our panel talk about and this one goes to uh, to, to Matt and Mike first um, just just from your perspective you know how do you recommend someone working at an agency use this document or does it and does that even vary by role so uh, I wanted to just think about that and, and just talk about that a little bit more I know you probably touched on it a little bit earlier in the session but I just want to just be very specific about that um, and Matt not to put you on the spot but um, you mind uh, kicking us off with that? No, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, Scott, as you, as you mentioned sort of in the beginning, we're really looking at this as, you know, a touchstone for our media planners uh, to sort of establish a baseline frame of reference of you know, here's, here's the minimum of, that you should be considering when you start to develop your RFPs. We should be providing um, our supplier partners with at least this much, in, much information and at least this much clarity. Um, so you know, we're, we're really going to be driving down through our agency that, you know, we expect all of our media planners to um, consume the whole document because honestly, I really want them to understand, um, you know, they understand our perspective pretty well, but I want them to understand the, the vendor perspective uh, as well so they can be more collaborative and uh, work with those partners more effectively. Great. Cool. And just to layer on to what Matt said, uh, this document is definitely beneficial from the top down in terms of, you know, from an agency perspective, everyone from an assistant media buyer all the way up to directors and VPs can benefit from it. Um, there's a lot of detail in here explaining how the process, you know, can be used properly with the new metrics and the new measurements um, and just having a firm understanding as to what's different. You know, the methodology is the same. The ingredients are new and they're better. Um, so it's something that, you know, understanding why will lead to a better better understanding of how to approach different media buys and different uh, planning executions. Right. And I also want to clarify too, um, and we, we also as a council did talk a lot about this as well. Um, we don't want to dictate how the industry should interact. We just wanted to make sure there were some guidelines that if mm -hmm. you want, that, that were there to help guide the discussion and the transition. So. Um, please take these as, as that, as this document. Um, Gina, I, I want to actually go to you for 
kind of the same question, you know, from your perspective, you know, how should somebody working at an operator use this document? And does that vary by kind of the role that you are in within an operator? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it varies. Um, I, I, most of the operators that are going to be using the document and using ultimately, whether it's the Insight Suite or using their own resources to go through the, the Insight's data, um, the, the, most of the roles are going to be for the purpose of providing proposals to their direct by clients. And again, I would just reiterate that anybody that is on the vendor side that is sorting through this data that's trying to figure out how do I re either respond to an RFP or how do I uh, put together a proposal that I can take to a direct by client, I would suggest you put yourself in the state of mind of I am an ad agency right now. I am representing my client. and. Uh, what is the most important thing that, that my client needs out of this out-of-home campaign? And just thinking through, you know, the direct buy or the direct sell um, vendors out there probably don't really have much idea of what goes on at an ad agency when they're consulting with their clients. But I can tell you it's very similar to what you do as a direct seller is you consult with your clients. So through, throughout that cons consultation process, uh, the idea is to gather all of the information that you need to help your client navigate the out-of-home space and make the best buying decision based on what their campaign objectives are, based on what the challenges that they're seeing in their organization, what type of information would be important in order to help them maximize their spend in the out-of-home space. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I know there's probably a lot of questions around that I mean, we did try to address a number of them in the FAQ section, but I think there's one in particular that I just want to make sure we talk about on this call today, because I know it's probably in a lot of people's minds as we start to near the ability to, to use this data for, for planning and buying and selling. Um, and just like, what is the best way, and we can do this from from um, you know the agency side as well the operator side. But what is the best way to talk to clients about changes and impressions that they may be seeing, whether they're going up or down, you know, or you know maybe even staying the same at some level, but the data inputs are are, are you know different. Um, what would you recommend? And I know we, we have some examples in the document, um, but I think like I said, I think it'd be great to just start to talk about some of that just on the call. And maybe that'll generate more questions. Uh, Mike, do you mind kicking us off with that? You know, I know we've spent a lot of time talking about that and trying to create an example. Sure. Um, yeah, and this is something that we really focused on while building the document, trying to understand the differences in the metrics and the measurements. Um, and the, the main focus here is that the legacy data should not be compared to the new data. This is not an apples to apples comparison. While the numbers are going to look relatively similar, they are, as I alluded to earlier, the ingredients going into them are more robust. There's more to it. It's not something that you can look at and go, well, we had a 50% decrease from last year to this year. That, that means the board decreased 50% in value. That's not true at all. Um, you know, what we need to understand is we're comparing it to the composition indexes or indices in each market and really getting an understanding as to how the board compares on a market level. That's the main focus mm -hmm. that needs to be adhered to when looking at the new data because you're going to be comparing it to how well the boards in the market do in, in retrospect to what board you're looking at or you know, type of media that you're looking into. Cool. Uh, Matt, Gina, anything that you wanna to add to that from, from your perspective? Sure, um, I, I would say, you know, again, sort of in the beginning of the document, it emphasizes the big transition here is moving from media focused to audience focused. And I think it's important for us to keep that front of mind and for us to be reiterating, reiterating that to you know, our clients and advertisers. Um, but it's really a shift from, from media to audience, and we're measuring the audience now. And the other thing, too, is, you know, it's sort of as, as Mike alluded to, just because these measurements are new doesn't mean the old measurements were bad. They were the best that was available then. Uh, you know, based on data that was available and, and measurement systems that were available, that was the best that was available. Now it's better. And, you know, moving forward, let's focus on how this is better and how we can craft better plans that reach your audience more effectively. Great. Thank you. 
Tina, any other perspective on that coming from the, uh, you know, the operator side? Uh, yeah, just maybe one quick example. Um, and I actually had a conversation here locally with one of my account executives who's a, who is an account executive that doesn't work with agencies. He works with direct by clients. And this exact issue came up this morning and he said, what do I say if my um, client asks about you know why are why are the numbers different and uh, I just kind of gave him a quick little example I said you know your direct by client I don't know that they necessarily have a comparable so last time that they bought that unit they uh, they didn't ha when you told them what the traffic or what the impressions were they didn't have anything to compare it to so they just shrugged their shoulders and said great sounds great <laughs> um, but uh, if if all else being equal, if last year when you sold them that unit, there were no data, there was no data available for that unit, would that client have, what unit would that client have bought in the market? Is that the unit that they would have bought? And he said to me, yeah, for sure, they would have bought, that's the unit they wanted to buy anyway, but then they asked me about the impressions. I said, so they were making a decision based on a gut feeling that that was the unit that was important to them because they're local in the market and they understand traffic flows. Traffic flows haven't changed from uh, there on September 30th and October 1st. Traffic flows are not changing in any way. We all know our direct markets. We, are not, we all know our local markets, and so do our, our business owners and the people we're selling inventory to. So this should just be looked at as an advancement and an opportunity for us to really help target in a way we've just never been able to do before. And to reiter reiterate what Mike said, it's not apples to apples. We don't need to be talking about last year's batch of apples. We just need to be talking about the whole fruit basket that we have ahead of us. Right, right. Um, and I just want to push that a little bit further. Like, I know we we're talking about, hey, don't compare. And I mean, I do you feel like there's going to be pushback or anything like that? Like, um, I, I just want to just like talk about that. There's a question that just came in about, you know, uh, is this realistic, you know, or, or how do we kind of navigate through that? Any other? Topic? I think per personally, yeah, there's going to be questions and we don't exactly know what questions that we're going to have until we get out on the streets and have, start having the conversations. Right. I think it's really important um, to fully explain what the, the new data sets are and uh, get everybody excited about them. And I think the excitement of having something that is so uh, intense, so detailed, so just so much richer than anything we've had in the past, that should overshadow any sort of conversation or concerns that people had regarding uh, what, what we've been working on with, with for the last seven or eight years. So uh, I, I think we can navigate that. It's just about getting on the streets and starting to have the conversations and we'll go from there. Right. And you know what, I mean, that brings up a good point too. Like, you know, as you're out there and you are getting questions, it would be please um, reach out to us on Geek Out um, because we want to help answer some of these questions that you're going to get. And it's also helpful because we can, like I said earlier, this is a living document and we can uh, in future iterations actually, um, you know, add to the FAQ section or add sections to, to the document. So again, this was our first attempt. We want to improve it and keep it, keep it uh, to be getting better all the time, so to speak, right? Um, and one other question came in, uh, again, I'm not sure necessarily how to answer it, so I'm gonna ask my panel and see if they have any thoughts on it. But there's one idea about, um, the idea of benchmarks, um, including that in, you know, is there any thought or ideas about, you know, uh, kind of a best practices number that could be in there, with high, medium, low levels, you know, um, you know, in, Granted, that may be subjective, but they kind of want to wondering about benchmarks in terms of market goals, I guess. Mm. Mm. Honestly, I think that's going to be, I do think that's a, a tough one because it's very subjective and going to be so tied to, you know, what the client's campaign goals, what their KPIs are. Okay. And I apologize if I'm not articulating that question well enough. And if you do want to follow up as we're talking, I can even go back to it. So apologies if I didn't quite uh, get the essence of that question out there properly. Um, I do want to pause and see if there are any other questions. Um, and 
as we're talking, I do want to thank, you know, everybody on the panel. I, I do have a little bit more, we do have more to talk about, but I, I appreciate the conversation and, and the interaction and the questions that we are, we are getting. So uh, please, you know, feel free to, to type in any other questions as we go along. But I do want to show a little bit about the new uh, learning lab that just launched yesterday. So um, you can get to it by logging in on our, on our homepage of our website. But when you do log in, you'll see that there are a host of different courses you can take. And it may look like, oh my gosh, what am I, you know, how do I navigate this? Well, there's a, uh, uh, an introduction and overview video that walks you through how to use it. But essentially, there are three, three certificates that you can receive. And they taught, it goes all the way from uh, understanding the measurement funds and the fundamentals. So really, we know there's, there's definitely always a lot of churn in the industry. And there's people coming in or people that have been in the industry for a while that may just want to refresh around things. So this, this first certificate talks about all the way back to the basics of, of media math. What is universe? What's an impression? Um, you know, how do you calculate a GRP? It also talks about the new methodology and it provides it a section that's additional materials if you want to really kind of geek out, so to speak, on the, um, you know, on the new methodology. It's not a required part of the course, but there is additional information there. And then uh, obviously want to, to provide some level of education on the Insight Suite itself. So how to use it. There's a lot of um, quick snippets, video tutorials that walk you through each of the uh, modules in each of the kind of tabs within those modules so you can just quickly like understand like how do I set up an audience how do I combine an audience which is capability that is in there for some and you know kind of in increasing um, but anyway it takes you through that and then also the third certificate is how do you tie this all together right I, I know the basics I know how to use the data how do I use that data to create value and those are use case driven um, webinars that we've done, been doing. We've cut them down so they're the essence of the use case. And we tried to cover a lot of different aspects and we'll continue to add to this. Um, this in an essence too is also, uh, I'd like you to think of this as a living, breathing kind of training module as well, uh, because we can continue to add to it. Um, and here's just an example of, you know, you click through, this is the measurement fundamentals. It gives you a little bit of an understanding of, the learning objectives along how long it will take you to complete. Um, just in case you're wondering, the whole set of three certificates, you can essentially go through in about four hours. Uh, that's the rough estimate. And you know, you can do it slower or try to do it faster if you want, but essentially plus or minus uh, around four hours. So in the morning, you can get through all of that and, and get your certificate. Um, you just click the button there and you're, boom, you're enrolled in the course. Um, here's an example of like digging a little bit deeper into that measurement fundamentals course. So everything is mostly supported with a video or a one pager and or a PowerPoint. So you can choose how you want to consume it or how you want to go through the process. So if you just care about, maybe I just want to watch the video and look at the one pager, or maybe I'd rather have the PowerPoint and the video. So it, it's hopefully flexible for, for our members in that. Um, and again, like I said, there's the three ways. There's video content, there's one pagers, uh, and then there's uh, PowerPoints as well. So essentially the PowerPoints are what we use to create the videos. And um, there's knowledge checks throughout. So there's concept reviews. So you watch a couple videos or you know, go through a couple sections. You get a quick two or three question uh, little, hey, are you paying attention? So you can, you can do that. And you know, this person uh, got them wrong. So it doesn't matter. You can go back and try again until, until you get it correct. The goal is to really just help our members learn and to have uh, an, a sense of kind of what the, the core of the measurement is in this. And you can check your progress as you go. Um, and just quickly, uh, you just this is our homepage. This button here is probably the quickest, quickest and easiest way to get there. You just click there, click there and go to the uh, the learning lab. And, uh, and so quick question that came in about, uh, so just to confirm, we will no longer be using ADS in 2020. Is there a way to pull reports in the insight suite? So that is the current plan. Um, you know, the tools will be, and I did caveat and I said it, uh, the current plan is that the ADS and L plan, uh, will be kept live until 
January 2020, but we do have the ability if needed to, to keep them going a little bit longer. But again, that's the current plan. And yes, you'll be able to pull those, that same type of information in out of the Insight Suite. So um, right today, you can do market average plans in the Insight Suite and also do um, you know, uh, inventory level plans uh, or weekly plans in the, in the Insight Suite. Again, a lot of that functionality will be continue to improve and evolve over the, the coming days, weeks, months. Um, but, but yes, that's the current plan. Scott, I just wanted to add on to that, just to clarify, yes, you will be able to pull the same type of data in the Insight Suite, but it won't be the same results because it's based on a different set of data sets, correct? Uh, yes, and yes, so impressions will potentially have, you know, evolved, you know, uh, if you're looking at it on unit by unit basis, yes, you know, the, you will see some changes and you will have the ability to go beyond just the current functionality in ADS, right? You will, won't just be able to only be able to look at, you know, uh, census-based demographics. You'll have a lot more behavioral and psychographics available to you as an industry, which hopefully, you know, going back to that question earlier, uh, which hopefully allow us to help change that conversation about impressions, right? It's like, you know, you're reaching, able to reach a more targeted audience. So you're able to reach the audience that you're actually looking for uh, more, more than ever before. Uh, any other questions as we're going through? And thank you for that, that clarification, Gina. Other things, uh, you know, all the materials are also available, the training materials are also available in our Geek Out library as well. Um, we wanted to have them in multiple places. It's just in the Geek Out library, they're not set up as a curriculum that you necessarily walk through. It's more of like, hey, you know what, I want to remember today how to um, calculate CPM. You can go in here and just find that without having to like take a whole course, you know, go through a whole course to get a certificate. That's why uh, we wanted to, to have multiple ways for people to use this information and, and consume this, this data as well. Um, just want to pause one more time and just see if there's any other questions. I hope that we've answered them. Um, and if we haven't, you know, please, you know, do reach out to us on, on geekout at geopath.org. That's, a, like I said, always a, the best way to, to do that. Um, a couple of things in case you missed it, and I think this is a good uh, webinar to, to watch if you haven't. Um, Dylan, Maven, and myself uh, did a, a webinar uh, about two months ago at this point. I guess it was mid June, but we did it and we really digged in and talked about kind of how the impressions have evolved, which changed, and why it matters. Um, and essentially, you know, that information. Uh, was used to uh, create some of the materials in the uh, in the best practices document as well. Um, there's a whole table in there that you can use as, as a reference that I've referenced before. Um, also want to talk about our geopath office hours for October. So we're going to continue with this foundational advanced level uh, sessions um, with the goal of again we want to make sure our members are feeling comfortable with the Insight Suite as that launches. So the, that's what the foundational level typically focuses on, changes and workflows in the Insight Suite. And then at the advanced level, we do things like this. We talk about other things, the data, how to use the data. We do use cases. Um, and right now we're planning to do a, a use case for October. Um, but if you know something comes up and we feel that our members would like us to do a deep dive into the learning module, we can do that but that's the intent right now. So there's the, and we typically do them um, the last Thursday and Friday of every month. We've got a little bit off schedule in the summertime. We wanted to make sure, you know, people, uh, people tend not to be in on Fridays. So we changed that schedule a little bit. And if you ever want to catch up on any of these out of home office hours, you can go to our, our website and go to the geek out tab and scroll down and, um, you know, uh, watch any of the most recent ones, or you can click, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor, you can click here and go right to our, our YouTube channel and find out any additional information. So again, 
geek out gpet.org if you have any questions and again i want to say thank you to everyone who joined today there were a number of people who joined for friday so great thank you so much i do want to thank gina matthew and uh, mike for all their help with the futures console and also for joining the session today so thank you awesome Thank you, everyone. Um, I don't see any other questions, and uh, hopefully this was helpful. And uh, we'll see you next month. And reach out to us before that if uh, you do have any other questions. Thank you again, everyone. Have a good afternoon and a good weekend.